My training was as a competitive swimmer when I was in Shanghai. First Chinese life by the Peruvian coming out. I was working in the fisheries with my dad. I was at the fisheries for about six years, then my hands started to go. Uh, I had carpal tunnel on, and I couldn't do anything anymore. Mm -hmm. The most devastating thing, I think, was the day I was the Bombed. I say bombed only because it, it was nothing else. There was no preparation or anything. And, oh yeah. And um, but out of that came a rare form of pneumonia, mm -hmm. where people, even I am afraid of needles. Oh yeah. I got a needle, <laughs> and because a friend of mine said you get the needle because there's nothing like breathing in, you hear your ribs crackle, mm -hmm. there's nothing you can do. I got scared and um, they sat me down, gave me a needle, gave me orange juice, you know, I, was, I thought I was going to faint, but I heard that it was a very, very rare form of pneumonia.
Well, I got married in that church in the 76 now. Anglican church. My cousin married that church. That's why I went back there. It's an artist station. I did the renovations there. I've been working for an architect. I know some. We knocked it up, put the beam, and then put the columns. Hello there. I am a It actually is a very important place for people in this community because it gives them a connection to the spiritual world and for me it was very important because I could see the oceans, I could see the mountains and view is so important when you're a tiny little cubicle as soon as you got hope and, and a perspective on what's better. I came back from Europe once and I brought my tent with me and just for protest that we pitched it up on the highest hill in, in Crab Park. Uh, <laughs> and um, the sprinklers woke me up at about 6 o'clock in the morning and we were all going and coming off my tent and I thought, hey, that's great, I got cooling air. <laughs> Before it heats up, not a drop came in, I was sleeping quite, quite all right. And then the park ranger came over with his horse, his bronco. <laughs> He told me to get up, and I said, oh, I'm packing up, but I'm still kind of groggy. Can you come back in half an hour, an hour or so? And I said, call in the troops if you want to. So he left, and the police came over, and was packing things up. We ended up in a handshake agreement, as long as I stayed out of sight, I was okay. Some people say that you should be lucky to have only one friend. I think it's great if you can be a friend to many people.